a Serpent Guard, an Oris Guard, and a Satesh Guard meet on a neutral planet. The situation is tense. The Serpent Guard's eyes flash, the Oris Guard's beak glistens, and the Satesh Guard's nose drips. Horus, wait. No, Oris. The Oris Z270X Gaming 5. Is it wrong that I delight so much in these things? We're gonna take a peek. Let's take a peek. This is a Z270 based motherboard. That's socket 1151 compatible with Skylake and Kaby Lake CPUs. So Kaby Lake has just been released by Intel, at least at the time of the creation of this video. So we're talking about i7, 7700K, you know, the i5, Kaby Lake i5, i3, i3K, all of that stuff. This motherboard is designed with a Z270 chipset. This is the Z270X Gaming 5. So it's kind of the middle of the road motherboard from Gigabyte. I mean, it's designed for enthusiasts, so it's got a lot of enthusiast features, but you know, at the very top end of the spectrum in terms of the motherboards the Gigabyte is providing around the Z270 chipset, uh, you can get a motherboard that's got a built-in EK water block for cooling and has a lot of other higher end features. Well, this is the Gaming 5. Let's get the RGB stuff out of the way. So it comes with an RGB app that lets you control the different RGB zones. There's also, instead of like the RGB header that most motherboards have, this has got RGBW. What RGBW is, is a five pin header instead of a four pin header. You can still use a four pin LED strip if you want. But, uh, you know, some people have noticed that when you combine red, green, and blue on an LED strip, you don't necessarily get white on, in terms of the light output. So there are some LED strips that are having, you know, RGB LEDs and then white LEDs and then an RGB LED and then a white LED. And so of course there's another control line for that um, for whenever you want to display white, you get a, a pure, more white looking white, I guess. And this motherboard has support for the RGBW LEDs. It also comes with Windows software for controlling the different LED zones, controlling the output header. Uh, there's another version of this motherboard that actually has multiple header outputs so that you can use multiple RGB or RGBW LED strips with your, with your motherboard if that's your thing. There's accented lighting on the RAM. There's accented lighting around the VRM componentry. There's accented lighting on the armored PCI Express slots. There are three PCI Express by 16 slots. It's by 16, by eight, and by four. So you can run the, the, the configuration as by 16, nothing, by four through the DMI, or by eight, by eight, directly to the CPU and then by four through the EMI. It also supports triple NVMe RAID through one U.2 device and two NVMe devices. It's got two uh, M.2 ports on the motherboard, one of which is uh, 2210, so it would support 110 millimeter M.2 devices. Four RAM slots, of course, DDR4. Um, supports DDR4 up to 4000 according to the documentation. Uh, the boards are certified for overclocks. I've not personally been experiencing overclocks this fast, but I've seen preliminary documentation and support um, for these that show, you know, an i7 7700K overclock in the 5.4 gigahertz range. So yeah, you can get 5.4 gigahertz, assuming you have a unicorn CPU that will go that high. I have a CPU that will go to five gigahertz. I was able to get it to five gigahertz on this board without any trouble, just going to UEFI, changing the multiplier, plugging in some values for the voltage and other stuff that I basically knew the CPU needed. I was a little disappointed that there wasn't as much help in the automatic overclocking department in the UEFI on the Gaming 5, as I've seen on other motherboards, but the Gaming 5 is sort of a middle of the road board and overclocking on KB Lake is pretty easy. So I don't know that you're missing out on all that much. This accent overlay in the front is also swappable. So you could, you know, make your own or get a different pattern uh, that you might use for, for RGB lighting and, and that would be fine. The name of the Windows app is the RGB Fusion app. The RGB Fusion app supports a bunch of different modes of operation. It can operate based on your music, like the pulse of the music or the sound that your computer's making. It can do color cycling. Uh, it can be static. You can do flash mode, random, wave, intelligent, whatever. Uh, you can also make it respond to different conditions in the system. The computer has five four pin fan headers, two of which support two amps of draw. So you can run water pump or really high end configuration in terms of your fan control. That is a, a PWM and DC hybrid. And you can control the fans through Smart Fan 5. Now the motherboard has several thermal zones as well. There's a bunch of thermal sensors scattered all around the, the motherboard and also an external temperature sensor. 
and you can use those thermal zones to control the different fans that you have in the system in terms of like fan RPM and fan control and things like that. So my testing overall, it's been a pretty solid board. It is a pretty good value for what it is. If you're going to get this board, you really should show it off in a, in a case with a side window or something like that. If that's your thing and that's what you're into, then you can definitely achieve some very interesting looks with this particular motherboard in terms of the RGB control. It is one of the fancier setups that I've seen as far as giving you control and flexibility and, and, and pretty polished Windows software for being able to control your, your RGB lighting and your RGB controller and, and that sort of thing. Again, Z270 chipset, designed for Kaby Lake. It's also backward compatible with Skylake. So if you've got a Skylake CPU, you can plug it in there. No problem, it's completely fine. Let's take a look at the back IO. All right, on the back, we've got a hybrid PS2 mouse keyboard port. That's great for people like me that are running the IBM Model M keyboard. And we've got two USB 2 DAC up ports. These ports have a separate isolated stabilized power supply. So if you're running an external USB audio DAC, then this will provide clean DC power for an external audio jack. Then we've got our HDMI and DisplayPort ports, which are wired into the, the iGPU on the, on the CPU that you, you might happen to be running. And we've got our two USB 3.1 Gen 2 uh, ports. This is provided through an As Media controller. One is Type-A, one is Type-C. Then we've got our two network adapters. One is Intel and one is the killer Ethernet E2500. Just below that, we've got two USB 2 ports and two USB 3 ports. Now the USB 3 ports here are provided by the chipset, but since it's Z270, those are USB 3.1 ports. And I'm gonna say this just in case it's colored wrong because I don't actually have the manual for this, but it's really surprising that all four ports are not USB 3 at the back. Just below your other ethernet adapter are two more USB 3.1 ports provided by the Z270 chipset. Yes, that's USB 3.1, 10 gigabit per second incorporated into the Z270. That's a change from Z170, so what do you know? And then you've got your Sound Blaster audio solution. You do have optical SPDIF out, gold plated audio connectors. Now this is a Sound Blaster X5 MB5 that's based around the Realtek ALC 1220, but it is 120 dB signal to noise ratio implementation. So it's got a smart headphone amp as well and a configurable gain dip switch on the motherboard. So you can configure if you want to do a gain of 2.5x or, or a gain of, of 5x. So if you're into Sound Blaster and you're looking for a Sound Blaster X5 M85, well, it's on the motherboard on this. The audio DAC is also user replaceable. It's a socketed 8-pin chip, so you could replace the amp with something else, some other type of amplifier, a higher quality amplifier if you want. You can replace the audio amplifier uh, by just removing the chip and replacing it and you're good to go. Another overclocking feature of this motherboard is that it does have an external base clock generator. So with this motherboard, you can generate a base clock from 90 to 500 megahertz. You know, the, the built-in Intel base clock generator is, is typically 100, 133, 166. But with this, you can basically set anything if you're going for a very fast base clock uh, for your CPU as part of your overclocking strategy for your, for your CPU. So just keep that in mind that this motherboard does actually have an external base clock generator, which is a nice feature to have if you're messing with the base clock for your overclocking on your CPU. In addition to the three PCI Express by 16 slots I mentioned before, there are also three by one slots, which are wired through the DMI so that you can use by one peripherals like add-in NICs, you know, capture cards, things like that. It's a nice feature. Along the bottom edge of the motherboard, you've got your front panel audio connector, which is on an isolated part of the printed circuit board and digital SPDIF output. Then you get this little LED demo header. What's that for? Well, it'll supply external power just for the LED parts of the board. So if this is part of a display or you wanted to just show off the, the LED parts, only the LED parts of the motherboard will run. So that's nice that that's isolated. Then you've got your RGBW header. Then you've got your TPM header. Then you've got your uh, USB 2.0 port one and two. So you've got four internal USB 2.0 headers for any peripherals that you might be running inside the case. Then you've got your diagnostic code readout LEDs, and then there's a cluster of four LEDs that are surface mounted on the printed circuit board. And these, these four LEDs will tell you if there's a problem with the VGA card, the add-in VGA card, or you know, your built-in VGA, whatever, the CPU, the boot device, or the RAM. And so just at a glance, you can see if there's a problem. Then at the bottom edge of the board, there's a four pin fan water pump header. Then you've got your front panel connector. Along the front edge of the motherboard, we've got three SATA Express connections or six SATA 6 connections if you want to use the connections that way. Then we've got our front panel USB 3 headers. Now this should be USB 3.1 from the Z270 chipset, but the printed circuit board is actually labeled FUSB 3.0, so I'm not sure about that. Gonna have to test that. 
there's two zones on the PCB that show you XMP and Turbo for the different modes that the motherboard will operate in. This motherboard does have Gigabyte dual BIOS, so you can toggle between a primary and a secondary BIOS for when you're updating. One of the USB ports on the back does also support updating the BIOS even without a CPU. So if you get this motherboard and there's another CPU that comes out later that this motherboard supports but the UEFI wasn't up to date, you can fully up to date this. If you get this motherboard, I strongly recommend immediately updating the UEFI as I do with pretty much everything since Haswell. Um, you know, Z270 and the KB Lake CPUs is a refresh. It's not unlike the Devil's Canyon Haswell refresh from that cycle. Um, if you're not familiar with the, the computer history of that, it's not, not really a big deal. Skylake, KB Lake, clock for clock, they're really about the same speed. Um, KB Lake is a little bit faster in terms of clock speed, but in terms of instructions per clock and how much work the CPU does per each cycle, they're basically the same. So a Skylake i7's clocked at 4 gigahertz uh, for, the, for the higher end i7 part. KB Lake's clocked at 4.2 gigahertz. So it's going to be a little bit faster just because it's clocked faster, but you know, in terms of like game changing, whatever, it's really not any different than what Intel has done in the past in terms of, you know, updating the CPU families. Like, you know, when, when Haswell came out, then they released, you know, Devil's Canyon, which was had some tweaks and some stuff to help overclockers. And so Z270 is really more about better peripheral connectivity, more peripheral connectivity, built-in support for USB 3.1 and the Z270 chipset, all that kind of stuff. So it's really about the peripherals. It's really about adding in. Now this does support NVMe RAID, so you could run RAID 0 with NVMe, but as a general recommendation, I'm going to recommend that you just get a higher end NVMe. You can easily get an NVMe that can do two gigabytes per second plus on the read speed, no problem. Instead of fiddling with RAID 0, just get a faster NVMe. Instead of getting multiple slower NVMe's, just, just get a faster NVMe. The connection between the DMI and the CPU is still only about four PCI Express lanes worth of bandwidth. That's an Intel chipset limitation. That's not really, that's not, not a problem with the motherboard or anything like that, it's just Intel. So overall though, in terms of the features and the connectivity and stuff like that, that this motherboard offers, it's doing pretty well. I'm surprised that there are three SATA Express ports. You know, there have been some KB Lake motherboards that have completely eschewed SATA Express altogether. And I'll be honest, I really haven't seen that many SATA Express peripherals. Um, there are some oddball SATA Express peripherals out there. There's a USB 3.1 controller that you can deploy in a five and a quarter inch drive bay that plugs in via SATA Express, which is pretty neat. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. But beyond that, I really haven't seen any SATA Express peripherals that do anything. Now it does have a U.2 port, so you can run NVMe, like the Intel NVMe, which is really nice. And then of course it's got RGB, so if you're gonna build a system to show it off, you totally got that. It's also got this nice uh, white shroud that goes with it. And I'll be honest, my favorite RGB LED configuration for this motherboard, just make the whole thing white. When you do that, you've got a nice black and white color scheme. I think that works for the motherboard, it works well. So honestly, the UEFI itself is a little surprising. It's pretty minimalistic. You know, as we look through and go through the screens here in the UEFI, um, there doesn't really seem to be as many screens as I'm seeing on other boards from this generation. But I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. It seems like Gigabyte has gone the extra mile to sort of organize and clean up superfluous and redundant options in the UEFI. I was really expecting to have trouble overclocking because, you know, in some of the other UEFIs, there, there's a lot of wizards and things like that that would help you overclock. There is an OC button next to the RAM. Turning on the XMP profile was as simple as actually selecting the XMP and just setting it on. Uh, it wasn't in 12 different places like I've seen in some UEFIs. But overall, the UEFI experience did actually work. I found a CPU level up area in the UEFI. I set it to five gigahertz and just hit reboot, didn't look at the settings, didn't tweak anything, and it worked. Now, I don't really think that that, for me, I'm gonna wanna tweak it. I'm gonna wanna go in and see if I can lower the voltage, minimize the heat, and for KB Lake, good lord, you're gonna need a closed loop all-in-one cooler if you're overclocking it that far because it generates a ton of heat when you take it past five gigahertz. So you're gonna want a good closed loop cooler. You might be able to get away with good air cooler, but I'm gonna recommend for the general population, closed loop all-in-one. You can do custom loop if you want, but it's a little more expensive. But get a good cooler for your CPU and make sure that it's fastened on there really well. But overall, the UEFI, was pretty good. I, you know, I almost looked over the CPU overclocking option because it's just, it's right there. It's not, you know, the big giant blinky button that I've seen in other stuff. So overall for the UEFI, 
I think I'll give it an A. It's, it's preliminary, I haven't had a chance to play with it. I'm gonna reserve final judgment until I've got a little bit more time clocked with this motherboard. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with how minimalistic it is, but functional it remains. I almost overlooked the fan controls as well. Gigabyte's added full fan control in the UEFI for the thermal zones and fan control, fan profile speeds, the whole nine yards. So that is there in the UEFI as well. If you're gonna run an alternative operating system, you totally can do that. So as I'm working through this thing and putting it together, it occurs to me, I've been to the place where this is made, the Nanping factory, um, my Gigabyte factory tour video, which hopefully I'll remember to link, but I was there, I saw this thing being made. So I probably occupied the space where this motherboard was put together. This is maybe a prototype or an early release, so maybe that's not true. But in terms of like production of this kind of motherboard, I was there. And so if you wanna see the factory where this thing was made, where I was six or eight months ago, you should totally go check that out because it was pretty neat. I really had a good time. You didn't think I forgot about testing Linux, did you? Nah, we tested Linux. I've got a SATA boot disk, booted off USB. Z270 pretty much worked out of the box. I mean, you kinda, you don't really expect a lot of Linux compatibility issues with Z270 because Z270 is really just a refresh. It's not groundbreaking, earth shattering new technology. So the testing in Linux is pretty minimal. It's does the iGPU work? Does the iGPU work as advertised? Does the audio work? Does the network work? Well, this motherboard's got a built in Intel NIC. So the Intel NIC was fine. The uh, display controller was fine and the audio worked. So overall on Linux, I got no complaints. I was pretty impressed with the, the overclocking capabilities. It's a really impressive motherboard for the price point and for the value that it delivers there. So if RGB is not your thing, then you might look at a different model motherboard. Or if you want to do closed loop water cooling or custom loop water cooling, you might look at one of the higher end boards. Overall, not too bad. If you get one of these, let us know your feedback. You know, good experience or bad, comment in the forums and let us know so that everybody's got more data for when they go to buy one of these things, if they build a new system or they do whatever. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, I'll see you next time.